Tylen Wallace. First question came from my guy, BB. He said, yo fam, hope all is well. Tylen Wallace is topic. Yak guy with tons of talent, blitting the call for war finalist that has to get more opportunity. Yeah, special teams is good, but Tylen has to be used as a primary weapon in this offense along with Bateman. This team is dangerous and depth is the focus. Uh, if Ravens don't sign a veteran wide receiver, Tylen will be the wide receiver too. Uh, thanks for the channel and just like Earl Thomas hitting Mason Rudolph, I'm out. This guy right here, man. Um, when I think about who could be that number two wide receiver for the Ravens right here, right now, um, with their current roster, uh, he is the one that sticks out to me the most. For Devin DuVernay, I really don't see him as an outside wide receiver like that. I don't know if it's me being naive. I don't know if it's because the Ravens, they have scarred me with the way that they use Devin DuVernay, but I just don't see him as the outside receiver like that. Tylen Wallace, um, even though he hasn't had much of an opportunity, when you look at what he did in college, like you mentioned, then it's like, oh, okay. And we know uh, the biggest reason that Tylen Wallace dropped so far down in the draft and he did only drop to the fourth round, but that is significant money from like second round to fourth round. Uh, but still, the, the biggest reason why he dropped was because of injuries. Now, one thing with that is that, uh, again, another reason why I want them to really load up at wide receiver is because of that word right there, injury. Now, his first year in the league, first year in the NFL, he got injured. He had injury problems in college. So we hope, of course, that the trajectory of his career takes a different path, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Now, of course, if you put a lot of stock in him and he ends up being that number two guy, that other uh, outside threat for Lamar Jackson opposite Rashad Bateman, um, and it works out great, great, but you still should have other options just in case. But when it comes to the receivers that the Ravens have right now, all the guys that are returning from last year, then he's the one that sticks out to me the most as that number two. Next question came from my guy, Terry. He said, who will wear the green dot? What's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing good and God is continuing to bless y'all. Oh, yeah, for sure. Appreciate you. Uh, it's been a minute since I sent a question. I wanted to ask if the person that I want to wear the green dot is valid. Uh, and who would you pick out of these guys? Marcus Williams, Chuck Clark, if he, will, if he was to stay. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, Patrick Queen, or Marcus Peters. Uh, so Marcus Peters, I'll take him off right away. Uh, I feel like somebody who, to wear the green dot, in my opinion, but somebody who wears the green dot, they got to be able to see the whole field. And they got to have access to a uh, look around the whole field. Marcus Peters, him being a cornerback, he's going to be on one side of the field. So there's going to be a section of the field that's kind of um, obstructed. So or, uh, obstructed. Because he's, he's on one side, Humphrey's on the other, or well, whoever's going to be on the other side, because Humphrey may be on the inside sometimes. You know how that goes. But So now I will take Marcus Peters out. But anyway, he said, out of these guys, who would you have wearing the green dot? Um, out of those guys, uh, I feel like the Ravens would want to give it to Patrick Queen, but based off of how things have been so far, I don't think they, they would give it to him yet. Um, I would probably say mm, Marcus Williams, if not Chuck Clark. We know Chuck Clark's been, he's had it, but I would say Marcus Williams. And I think that uh, one, one advantage, well, not even advantage, but one, something that he has that goes in his favor is that Ravens are learning a new defense. Yeah, they did say it's going to be some similarities and whatnot to the old defense, but they're learning a new defense. So new terminology. So everybody has a clean slate. So nobody necessarily has an advantage over the next person as far as knowledge and whatnot. Well, when they have the similarity to the previous defense, they will. But overall, everybody's learning this new defense. So that means that that green dot, it can get passed to somebody else. So if it's not going to be Chuck, then I would say Marcus Williams. Uh, and he said, I did my research and no corner wears the green dot. Uh, I don't know if it's possible for a corner to wear a green dot. But if it was, I would want Peters uh, to play every single game. Um, and he could put Mike McDonald, or he could, you could put Mike McDonald smarts with his and put teammates in positions to succeed. Stay safe and trust. Yeah, we know he certainly got the smarts for it. He certainly does. Certainly does. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would rather somebody who sees everything. They got that broad view of everything happening on the field. Now, if, if any cornerback could do it, it, it would be him. Um, but I would rather somebody who got more access to everything and everybody. This question came from Julius. He said, Ravens blame game. He said, listen, I like Lamar, but <laughs> <this> is, <laughs> I think I know how this is going to go. 
Because whenever you see a comment start off like that, you, you know the direction that it's turning. But anyway, listen, I like Lamar, but at the end of the day, we all have seen this before. Let's say Lamar bets on himself, wins the Super Bowl, and Steve finally gives him the money he deserves. I fear it will be another Joe Flacco effect where he gets the money, but yet they don't invest into the pieces to keep, uh, keep a winning formula. Uh, for example, they traded Anquan Bolden, uh, Torrey Smith left, Bart Scott left, etc., and they never replaced the pieces to keep a consistency of success. Uh, well, f first off with that, um, I feel like they should have done a better job investing pieces in the first place before the contract. But anyway, with Lamar, is see, that that's where it's scary because the Ravens, as far as pieces around him and the quality of those pieces around him, he's shown that, and I love how Shady McCoy, oh my goodness, he had a segment on ESPN um, I think it was him, Joy, Joyce Taylor, Joy Taylor, um, and oh, it was one more person. Maybe it was uh, Acho, uh, Emmanuel Acho, and they were talking about, is Lamar Jackson a top 10 quarterback? Uh, Acho said yes, but put him at like 9 or 10, I forgot. Uh, Joy Taylor said yes and put him at like 6 or 7, I forgot, but either way, Shady, uh, LaShawn McCoy, he said, yes, he's certainly uh, a top 10 quarterback. And I think he put him maybe top five, something like that. But he was like, he is uh, the most important quarterback to his franchise. And he said, reason being, because if you put, uh, if you take away, um, if you took away Patrick Mahomes for the roster that they had, if you took away a Josh Allen from the roster that they had, another quarterback could come in there. Uh, you take away Joe Burrow from the roster that he had. Another quarterback could come in there, and he had some other examples as well, but he said another quarterback could come in there, and they could make some stuff happen because of the talent that they have at the skill positions. But with Lamar Jackson, if you take him out, it's like, oof. Oh, yikes. Uh-oh. So I was just like, oh, man, that that just makes so much sense. And that speaks to the quality of the Ravens talent. And again, not saying that these guys are bad, but the the talent level is just it seems to be a little mismatch there. Obviously, mine is tight end. We know tight end. They got one the, the one who was the best tight end in the league last year in the top three tight end. But anyway, um, as far as wide receivers, it's like, oh, whoa, wow. And, and we know how to, this team lives and dies through one Lamar Jackson. So the reason I say that it's dangerous is because if the Ravens were to sign Lamar Jackson to a big contract, I, I, I would just hope that they wouldn't be like, oh, well, all right, we paid you. We, we can't, we can't, we really can't get nothing now. We really can't get nobody on offense now. Because De defense, you know, they're going to find a way. They're going to find a way. But I feel like I would be a little worried about offense. Like, ooh, how, how would they handle that? Um, cause I mean the biggest contracts on offense, their left tackle, Ronnie Stanley and injuries kind of made that contract really bad. Um, it's been rough. Ronnie Stanley is a great player, but the injuries, you can't be a great player if you can't be on the field. Uh, Mark Andrews, his contract, phenomenal, phenomenal, great contract, great value. Um, because they signed up to big money, but then, uh, all these other Titans, they end up getting paid and more, and the timing of his contract was excellent. Because had they waited, and especially after he had the year that he had, ooh, Mark Andrews' price would have been way up. And I, I would have been like, hey, pay him. Pay him. Whatever it is, pay him. Because he would have deserved it. Um, but they paid him a year early rather than a year later, and they saved a lot of money. Whew, that worked out for them. Um, but who else? Everywhere else has been pretty much bargain shopping. Yeah, I think Morgan Moses... Three year, fifteen million dollar deal, so five mil per. Uh, Patrick McCarry, he about five mil per. Um, running backs, you got two. Dra you got a drafted guy, J.K. Dobbins. You got Justice Hill, who you drafted in the fourth round a couple years ago. You got Gus Edwards, undrafted. Uh, Mike Davis, uh, your free agent. Um, a wide receiver, Rashad Bateman, draft first round pick. So there goes a nice significant investment right there. Uh, you got a third round pick. You got a fourth round pick. You got a sixth round pick. Um, so it's just like, uh, I, I just, but I, I wonder, like, if the Ravens, the way that they move now, how would they move after they pay Lamar? That's one thing that I would be worried about. But Lamar has shown already that he can still win. He can win. But I, I still, I just wouldn't want that to take away from what the Ravens do for him 
and really for the team as far as those skill positions. But anyway, back to your question. Um, after all the money, uh, after all the money, can they afford to keep up is the question. Who can they afford after Lamar? See, again, my, my, my biggest fear, what, what have they done before Lamar on the offensive side of the ball? So, yeah, after they pay him, how, how will their philosophy be? Will it change all of a sudden? I, I, I can't say yeah. But what's going to happen after they pay him the bread? But, well, yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, we have to be able to help keep Lamar successful, too, by continuously giving him receivers, offensive linemen, running backs, tight ends, top-tier players for a top-paid quarterback. Yes. And another thing, too, once you pay Lamar Jackson, um, you you can still pay other people. Like, teams have shown, like, the, just because you pay a quarterback, it does not stop there. It does not stop. Look at the Raiders right now. Max Crosby got paid. Chandler Jones got paid. Um, Derek Carr got paid. Devontae Adams got paid the most in the league. Darren Waller, he's he's probably underpaid right now, but he even got paid. But so you get the you, you can still make stuff happen. So just because a quarterback gets paid, that is not an excuse. It's not. But anyway. Um if we could put top tier pieces, oh, but what I was saying too. Um with that, uh, the drafting, it becomes that much more important, too. And the Ravens, I mean, let, this year we'll see how it pans out. But previous drafts, they've been a little, a little shaky. I mean, 2021, it, it's, looking, it's looking decent. It's, it's, and it's one of the better ones. And Eric DeCosta has been getting better every year and been getting more impact every year. But it's still been a little bit shaky. So the drafting will have to, imp have to improve, too. Uh, he said, if we could put top tier pieces around Tyler Huntley or Anthony Brown Jr. to where they could be, uh, they could win a Super Bowl or they could be Super Bowl winning quarterbacks for an affordable price. Would that be so bad? Uh, see, this this is where your butt came in. That's where the butt came in. So I, I knew it was going to go somewhere. I didn't think it was going to go that route, but I knew it was going to I knew it was going to go somewhere. Because whenever somebody said, listen, I like Lamar, but then it's, 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 it's headed down a rocky road. So we on that rocky road now. Would that be so bad? Yes, it would be. Um, the reason being because they're not Lamar Jackson. Well, a Anthony Anthony Brown, uh, we don't know what he is in the league. Um, so, no, right now he's not Lamar Jackson. Tyler Huntley is not Lamar Jackson. With Tyler Huntley, you saw what happened. Lamar went out. Tyler Huntley went in. We never won a game again. Oh, that rhyme, by the way. But And we love Tyler Huntley, but he's not Lamar. He's not Lamar. But anyway, he said if Lamar got traded to a team that could afford what he wanted on a contract and put top tier players around him without it having it be a financial issue, would that be bad for Lamar? No, it wouldn't be bad for Lamar at all. It'd be terrible for the Ravens, though. And for them to have to start over at the quarterback position would be very scary. Very scary. Uh, he said, maybe we as fans have to not be so selfish and look at all look at the overall success of a player and they having a great future in the NFL versus having a winning football team. <laughs> fans want both. We want both. And it's possible to have both. I understand what you're saying. You're saying look at the business aspect of the NFL a lot more, which, which yeah, I, I get it. Trust me, I, I do. Uh, but anyway, he said, I'm just saying, I want him to stay, but are we going to invest the extra money to surround him with the weapons he needs? It's like getting a $260 million contract to be a QB in Detroit. Yes, the money is good, but you also want a winning cast with you. Now, that, that's an extreme right there. That, now, the Ravens, the way that they run stuff, it is not like the Detroit Lions. It's not. <laughs> like, we, we, we disagree with them on the way that they do some things, but it is not like no Detroit Lions. And I think the, the reason why we get so frustrated with some of the things that they do um, is because of their success that they've had overall in their existence. So our expectations are higher. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with having high expectations for the Baltimore Ravens. Um, he said, uh, we still, oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, the money is good. So back to his Detroit comparison. He said, yes, the money will be good, but you also want a winning cast with you. We still need to add more weapons for him, period. We all need to take a hard look at Eric DaCosta and scouting. After Ozzy, it's been rough. Or am I the only one who's paying attention? What Ozzy, Ozzy was not no perfect drafter now. Let, let's not forget about that. And we ain't taking shots to nobody, but Ozzy was not no perfect drafter. Ozzy had a lot of misses too. Eric DaCosta has, has had a lot of misses. Ozzy had a lot of misses too. But with Ozzy... Um, the hits, they were the hits. And it's like, oh, oh, whoa. Ray Lewis, Jonathan, Ed Reed, Terrell Sutton, Lodi Knox. 
Joe Flacco, Lamar Jack, Mark Ench, Orlando Brown. Like, the hits have been the hits. So, and he, he got a long history of hit. He got a long history of misses now, too. But the impact of those hits, it was like, whoa. Oh, my goodness. Like, a lot of historic players, too, man. If I was Lamar, I wouldn't sign anything until you put some pieces around me. Tom Brady had Wes, Gronk, Randy Moss, and the list goes on. Give this man the players he deserves. And don't forget on that Tom Brady list, the refs, too. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And if you couldn't tell, this is an episode of NFL Questions from Subs. But anyway, next question came from my guy, Liam. He said, hey, I'm a huge fan of your channel. Uh, and for a while, when I go on a walk or a run, I tend to listen to you because of your energy. Oh, okay. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, but I have a serious question. And especially with the long videos, you, you can get a lot of walking and exercise done during those. So appreciate it. But he said, let's say perhaps the Ravens get all injured all over again and Lamar has a season similar to his 2020 or 2021 season now those two different seasons now I think 2020 what was the, what was he 20 and 6 20 touchdowns and 6 interceptions or 20 I forgot what it was but anyway um he said do you think that the end last year was like was like 16 to 14 16 to 13 so I forgot what the ratio was bad and I know context matters too you can't just look at the numbers but yeah. Uh, anyway, do you think that the Ravens would fire John and the, and, the, and the boys or would John be fired and Greg moved up to head coaching position? Uh, I know this sounds dumb, but I was thinking about this for a while. Um, nah, I don't think that uh, if it, with the part that you said, if the Ravens get all injured all over again, then no, I, I think they would give they give everybody a pass again. But I, I wonder because, again, I I thought that there was a lot of decision making. Uh, even with all the injuries, that was very questionable. And they didn't take into account who was out there and what was going on in a different situation. I thought a lot of the situational football last year was bad. A lot of situational decisions last year, in my opinion, were bad. Um, that was in real time. That was uh, looking back at it. it. It wasn't just one of those, oh, well, hindsight is twenty twenty. No, no, no. We talked about this in real time as they were going on, as they were happening, as they were being decided. Um, I did not agree with a lot of stuff that they were doing last year, especially a lot of those two point conversions and whatnot. Um, but and, and then a lot of the way that uh, the defense was being played with a lot of guys injured, uh, just a lack of adjustments, a lot of lack of in game adjustments from both sides of the ball. Um, but I, I, so, uh, well, I don't think I don't think they would fire John Harbaugh if that happened again. We don't want it to happen again. It, it, there's no way that can happen again. That was so bad. Oh, that was so bad last year with all them injuries. But, no, nah, I don't think John will go anywhere. Next question came from my boy Luke. He said, yo, what's up, Engraving? I've been watching your videos for a while. Quick question. Do you think that EDC is planning to keep the wide receivers on the roster to see how they play? But if things go south, he will make one of his famous in-season trades. Oof. That is a really good question. And I think it, it depends on so much. Um, obviously, depends on how the wide receivers are doing. Hopefully, we don't even have to have this conversation. Hopefully, they're over there killing it. They're balling and they're doing their thing. Um, but it also depends on who's available, too. Now, of course, there's always somebody that's available. But who would it be? Would they be worth it? Would they be somebody that can really help get the Ravens to where they ultimately need to go? Uh, so much just it, it, so much depends on everything, really. Um, so it's one of those things that's really to be determined. Uh, hopefully we don't have to get there, but um, we just got to wait and see. And the last question on this episode came from my boy Jay. He said, I think it's time for me to just enjoy the ride with the Ravens. Hello, Engraven. First time sending a question. Really more of a thought. Uh, me, as many others, I feel frustrated with the poor effort Ravens put on the wide receiver position and how little they value it. Uh, as the seasons went by, and especially this offseason, this thought hit my mind that, yeah, the Ravens as an organization from the top to the bottom, they really don't see the wide receiver as a super important element on their foundation. Is that right or wrong? Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, right. Ravens haven't really... Receivers not really there. That's obviously not their bread and butter. Um, they never really put much into receiver at all throughout their history. Um, 
they they've been a couple of first round draft picks like Mark Clayton, Travis Taylor, Rashad Perryman, Hollywood Brown, uh, Rashad Bateman. Um, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. But uh, then there's been a lot of a lot of times when they sign a receiver, it'll be somebody that's well past their prime. Um, now the 2010 that was defense. That that defense got them that Super Bowl. Boy, that defense wasn't playing. Um, one of the best defense to ever do it. Uh, but in a more uh, modern day uh, NFL, the 2012 year, no Anquan Bolden, no Super Bowl, no Jacoby Jones, no Super Bowl, no Torrey Smith, no Super Bowl. And those receivers, they made a countless amount of plays for the team throughout, and they had a big three. That was their big three. And then on top of that, they still had Dennis Pitta, and they had uh, Ed Dixon too, and they had Ray Rice. And then they had Bernard Pierce too, but you see they, they had a, a good significant weapons and guys that were playmakers. They made big time plays and big time moments. Uh, and again, Anquan Bolden will come through with a clutch, crucial catch. Torrey Smith will come through with a bomb down the field. Jacoby Jones will come through with a huge return that gave the team a spark. Um, so that you see the impact of a wide of wide receiver quality wide receivers and what it does uh, for your franchise and, uh, and balance wide receivers because they had Anquan Bolden. He wasn't a speed guy, but Anquan Bolden, that, that number one, that dog, he got just got that nasty in him, man. That go up and get it. No, I'm going to outmuscle you for this ball. This is mine. It's not yours, and I'm going to let you know that it's mine. Torrey Smith, the deep downfield threat and the legitimate deep downfield threat. Uh, with teams, they realize you're going to try it. You're going to try it. And Torrey Smith get to doing his arm like that, that means he's getting ready to catch the ball. So he gonna, he, Flacco is going to try it. And then you got Jacoby Jones, who was a, a decent receiver, but he, he was more so a, uh, a special to return guy. But he did make some plays as a receiver too. Um, so, yeah, so Jacoby Jones, he contributed in more ways than one. So they had that big three. Um, but anyway... He said, is it wrong because this is a passing league and therefore they should go with the flow of big wide receiver market? But if they win a championship with their own philosophy, would that make the other ones be wrong? No, it would just make Ravens philosophy. It would show that it can win a Super Bowl. Um, it wouldn't make the other ones wrong, though, because the other ones have won Super Bowls and those have been the Super Bowl winners. Uh, but it, it wouldn't make the other ones wrong. Um, it would just add the Ravens into being right as well, saying, hey, this way works too. If whatever formula you choose takes you to win the championship, then which formula is right and which one is wrong? Uh, what I know is that you should always keep balance or at least keep it the most balanced way possible. Uh, what I mean when I say enjoy the ride is that we, the fans, can't really make things change when that's an organization decision. And I'm just in a position of, okay, Ravens, you're not betting all your money on a wide receiver position like other teams because you believe you can do the job in this other way. Then I'll hope that you get the big prize. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what it is. I mean, we, ask for, we, we, we can't change anything. We don't change anything. We get on here. We talk about it, how we feel things should go. Sometimes we're right. Sometimes we're wrong. Uh, and, and that's just how it is. We, we can't change anything. We, we just watch and see what they do as a team, as an organization. And, yeah, we just, okay, hope, hope, hope it all works out. There will be times when stuff does work out and it will be like, oh, well, <laughs> I could have told you that was going to happen. Or there could have been times when stuff doesn't work out and be like, oh, man, I thought that was going to work. But, hey, it really didn't. At least they tried. So it's just, yeah, we, we don't have any control over that. He said, I, um... I guess what I'm trying to say is if the Ravens truly, truly, truly believe that the adjustments, additions, strategies they are using right now is the optimal path for them to win a championship, then so be it. I'm not going to fight it or cry about it. I will hope for the best, see how this unveils itself, and we'll be hoping for that championship. Now, if this doesn't happen, the, I believe the Ravens would change that whole philosophy when they reach the lowest of the lowest. I don't think so. Um... I, th I, don't, I don't think so, though. But anyway, uh, he said, until then, I believe they will keep going at it. So I'm just going to enjoy this ride, truly believe, believe in this team, hoping for the best, and hoping that this path that they're taking will take us to a championship. Just trying to be stress-free with this team. <laughs> Hope I make myself clear. Thanks for your time reading this. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
I with what you said as far as just enjoying a ride, I get that. But then that last part, that's the only part that I, I disagree with you on because you said stress free. Stress free and ravens, they don't mix. Yeah, this feels like a dream. 